goes up to the chariot and he heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. And Philip asked, do you understand what you're reading? How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come in and sit with him. There's the open door. I was reading. I don't know what I'm reading. I don't understand it. You asked, hey, why don't you help me? Be a part of the solution in my situation. Philip was standing near the chariot, and before he knows it, what is happening? He is invited to sit and to talk. I want you to get something here today. Please hear this. Life is not a string of random events. Every day of your life is ordained by God, and those encounters you have with other people are not by chance. There's a reason. I love what we heard in worship today. Look, I don't want to hold my peace because if I hold my peace, the rocks will cry out. God's given you the opportunity today. He's going to give you an opportunity today, tomorrow, into next week, to love someone, to listen to someone, to care for someone in Jesus' name. What are we going to do with that? There was a phone call that I got. I, I told Pastor Ryan in the early service, I almost said a random phone call that I got on a Sunday, on a Saturday afternoon a week ago. It wasn't random. It seemed that way to me. I'm just riding down the road and all of a sudden, uh, well, actually it came through in the form of a text letting me know I'm going to get a call. Well, it's Saturday before Father's Day. So my reaction to that was, yes, I'm going to get to minister to somebody today. That was not my reaction. It's like, it's the Saturday before Father's Day. What is the deal? You know, can it wait till Monday? I didn't know what it was going to be about, so I got this phone call, and the phone call went like this. My father-in-law has been diagnosed with cancer. It is a very aggressive form of cancer. They've put him on hospice care. He has days to live, and he wants to talk to someone about the Lord. Now, we had plans Saturday night. I'm going to try not to cry. <clears throat> but I'm thankful for the life that God has given me. Because I got off the phone and I knew I needed to leave. And I knew leaving was going to mean missing some of the things we had planned. And so I had already got in my mind, okay, let me figure out how I'm going to tell Kirsten that I'm not going to make this thing that we weren't in charge of it, but we were supposed to be there. And I had already been in a conversation with her where she reminded me that I said I would go. <laughs> so, none of y'all have ever had that conversation, but... <clears throat> But I looked at her and I was, I was ready to plead my case. And before I could even get it all out, she said, you got to go. Get there when you can get there. This is what you got to do today. This is why you're breathing today. See, not only was this man ready to talk to me about the Lord and commit his life to Jesus, but his daughter was too. And I stood by a hospital bed with a man. And the family had told me, look, don't, don't worry about it. You don't have to come today. We know it's Father's Day weekend. And I, I couldn't, I wouldn't have slept Saturday night if I had not gone, Rick. And I went and I watched a, a daughter hold her dying father's hand. And then commit their life to Jesus. And I was so thankful for my wife. She makes me better at everything. But I was thankful that she partnered with me in that and was praying for me on that journey. And I was thankful for that moment 
Because it was an open door. <laughs> See, oftentimes we're, really most of the time, we're, we're gardeners in the kingdom of God. We're sowing seed. And every now and then, we get a phone call on a Saturday afternoon. Or we walk into a rest area or we come into church or we go out to eat lunch after church today and God puts a waitress or a waiter in our path or somebody at Sam's in that line that I don't know why you would get in on Sunday. They're open Monday, so do that then. <laughs> if you make me go to Sam's today, I'll know you're mad at me, okay? <laughs> so... Um, but he gives you that moment where you're able to share and that, man, that fruit is just, it's ripe. I, all you gotta do is just look in that direction and it falls off the vine. But most of the time we're sowing. We're sowing seed. But when God opens that door, don't miss that opportunity. See, Philip he could have looked at the Ethiopian eunuch and said, I, I can't stop and talk to you right now because God said go down the road. <laughs> so I'm just walking. But because he was in tune and he was listening to the heart of God, he knew that's who I'm supposed to talk to. 